my name is Christina Valdez, and I am the um, co-artistic director and co-owner of Crescendo Conservatory. Crescendo Conservatory is a ballet conservatory in Kansas City, United States of America. Um, I have choreographed two dances in tribute to Yuzuru. I have choreographed Notis Salada, a ballet um, tribute to Yuzuru, and Haru Yokoi. I choreographed that most recently in January, and that was a ballet inspired by Yuzuru Hanyu. I first saw, saw Yuzuru skate in 2018. I was coming home from teaching a ballet class, and I was really tired and uninspired and just kind of done. And my daughter was on the couch and she's like, mom, we need to watch um, the Olympics because there is a rock star figure skater who is blowing up the internet. And I said, well, I don't like sports. I don't want to watch the Olympics. And she said, no, really, I think you need to watch. So we sat down and we watched um, Chopin and it was stunning. And I thought, well, is this a ballet dancer who also trains in figure skating? So I asked my my daughter himself, where does he train? Is he with the National Ballet of Canada who also figure skates? And she said, well, yeah, he trains in Canada, but he just um, trains for figure skating. And I thought, certainly that can't be right. He looks exactly like a ballet dancer. Um, and so we watched we watched um, Seime and then we watched Nota Stellata. And after Nota Stellata, I was in, I, I, what, tell me more, tell me more. And then I come to find out that Yuzuru won his set, second Olympic gold medal um, on painkillers. And then I got onto YouTube and I just couldn't get enough. Um, so from then on out, I just really started becoming really focused on Yuzuru and, okay. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm gonna go ahead and lock. Did I mute everybody? Okay. That's everybody. Um, I'm gonna start out with this PowerPoint and um, I'm gonna discuss the similarities between ballet and between Yuzuru skating. Um, and for those of you who are ballet dancers, this is going to be really obvious. So forgive me for that part. Um, the second and third part of the PowerPoint is going to be um, my choreographic process. So I choreographed Nota Stellata, a ballet tribute to Yuzuru Hanyu, kind of my thoughts behind when I choreographed Nota Stellata. And then um, when I choreographed Haru Yokoi, two very different places that I was in when I choreographed those two dances. So um, that's kind of where I came to those different places and how I choreographed those two pieces. Um, if you just wanna be here for the beginning, that's fine. Um, why am I doing this lecture? Well, um, it's kind of a difficult time in the world right now. And I know that right now I am trying to fill my head with only things that are positive. And as I teach my kids, I tell my kids like, you know, what are we gonna do today that's positive? on um, both my own children and my ballet dancers. So I like to watch Yuzuru skate. And I like to listen to people say positive things about Yuzuru. So as I'm driving my car or if I'm at home or just sitting in my backyard, I will listen to Tracy Wilson's commentary about Yuzuru during um, Skate Canada. Or I will listen to Ted Barton's commentary about Yuzuru during, during um, the rehearsal in Skate Canada. And when they say really good things about Yuzuru, I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. And then that makes me feel better. Or I'll just sit down and I will watch Nota Salada and it will fill my soul. So if tonight you're listening to me say good things about Yuzuru makes you feel good too, well then maybe I did a good thing tonight. So um, at the very end of this lecture, we're gonna have a little bit of Q&A via the chat. I've muted everybody so that I don't get the feedback. Um, and that's what we're gonna do tonight. Um, I want to first say thank you to Nari. She has been my translator since day one. She translated our Notis Delata um, YouTube and she's been translating so many of my tweets and thank you so much Nari for all your hard work and our conversations at four o'clock in the morning. So I really appreciate that. Um, a couple weeks ago, I asked for people to submit pictures um, of, of things that they thought looked like ballet that Yuzuru did, and I had an overwhelming response. So everyone who sent me pictures uh, via Twitter, thank you so much. Um, I really tried my very best to try to get everyone's permission to use their photography. So forgive me, I, I really tried to use only the photos that I was able to get um, permission to use a photography. 99% of the videos and the, the, the photos that I have, I have permission to use. Um, 
The other 1%, hopefully everyone's okay. This is just for educational purposes. The photography that I have of ballet dancers is, is my kids and are, are my kids. And I just wanna say that I am super, super proud of my Crescendo Conservatory dancers. And I, um, I would love to showcase them. So hopefully you feel the same way when you see their photos. Similarities between Yuzuru Hanyu and ballet. Um, I think that's everything. The foundation of ballet is turnout. So here is a picture of my dancers in point shoes in turnout. Of course, we have the adorable little poo right there. In turnout in ballet. Again, if you're a ballet dancer, this is fundamental to you. Um, feet go in opposite directions. So here's a picture of my dancers with their feet going in the opposite directions. Kneecaps go out to the opposite direction. Here is another picture of my dancers in turnout. And thank you, Nari, for the translation. Um, in ballet, we want rotation to come from the hips. Knees go out. Tops of the, the feet point out. This is, of course, on point. This is second position on point. In ballet, we have five positions. So we have, let me see if my pointer is working. We have first position. Uh, I love this. I love this infographic because the, the legs are in two different colors. First position, toes pointing out. Second position is space between the feet with toes pointing out. This is a position that Yuzuru lives in a lot. Third position is heel in front of heel. Fourth position, there's space between the feet this way. Second position is this way. Fourth position is this way. And then for this fifth position is heel in front of heel. So let's look at, let's look at Yuzuru. There is a gorgeous picture of Yuzuru in second position turnout. Notice his feet are in opposite directions. That is a 180 degree turnout. And dancers spend years at the bar trying to achieve that, achieve that rotation from the hips to get the 180 degree turnout. That is just some stunning. Here's another, um, another picture of two pictures of Yuzuru in turnout. Uh, of course, he's defying gravity. And of course, he's on the ice but ro beautiful rotation with beautiful alignment. His body is held up straight, his posture is beautiful, and it looks like ballet, and it looks effortless. 180 degree turnout on the ice. So now we're gonna talk about um, a grand plie in second position and alignment, posture and alignment. I've heard that there's been some criticism about Yuzuru's posture and alignment, which as a ballet teacher, I don't understand. I had one of my dancers take these pictures for me so we can highlight what alignment looks like. This one on the left here is incorrect alignment. If you notice her rib cage is pointing out, her rear end is sticking out, and this is in second position. So she doesn't look like she's in a straight line. If you look at the second picture here, a second position grand plie, we have a straight line going all the way down her back. And that's exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see the knees going over the toes. We wanna to see rotation from the hips. This is a beautiful second position grand plie. Now let's look at like, Yuzuru's. He has amazing turnout for a non-ballet dancer in his hips. So knees go over toes and we have amazing turnout from the hips. Another picture of a grand plie in second position on the ice. Um, beautiful posture, beautiful turnout. Now here's a fourth position lunge. And if you look at it, look at the toe is pointing in this direction and the other toe is pointing in that direction. 180 degree turnout. Of course, beautiful port de bras Rotation is from the hips. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This is another position that we have in ballet. This is a position that we have that's kind of a beginning position or an ending position. This position is called B plus. And what you need to do is you squeeze your inner thighs together, you bring your knees together. And what we wanna see is a beautiful foot here in the background. It seems like um, for many figure skaters, they use this position as an opening or an ending pose, or maybe when they're bowing. Um, but for me, Yuzuru's B plus looks balletic. We want to be very careful of a sickle, sickle foot when we do a B plus. This is an incorrect foot in a B plus where the foot looks like a banana. The heel is coming, coming down. Um, this one on the left is a beautiful line, a straight line. So if we look at it here, there's a Yuzuru in B plus and the heel is pressed forward. The thighs are pressed together. Shoulders are down. Posture is gorgeous. Beautiful B plus. Here's a B plus of, um, that we submitted to the Olympic Channel. Um, when we did Notice de Lada, we were, we were um, very honored that we were featured in the Japan Times and we were also featured on the Olympic Channel. And for uh, a challenge that the Olympic Channel did, we took a picture of many of our students um, in B plus. This is uh, our, our 
our little homage to a tonal and they're all in B plus. And if you look at some of my little babies, we've got little sickle feet, but that's okay because they're babies. Um, but as we get older, we really strive to have that heel forward turned out, turned out front foot. And that's ex exactly what Yuzudu does. And that is his opening and his ending for a tonal, which oh, is just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, the costume and all of it. Um, in ballet, port de bras is, is uh, defined as carriage of the arms. So how do we carry the arms? So when I first thought, saw Chopin, I mean, that's what really struck me as he must be a ballet dancer. I mean, aside from his amazing skills on the ice, like the, the jumps and, and all the spins and everything, the amazing skills on the ice, his port de bras and his carriage and his posture just spoke to me as ballet. And to be able to hold your hand with both a delicacy and a strength is a skill that comes to ballet dancers. To hold your hand properly is a skill that comes to ballet dancers. Most of the time people hold their hand like this, which is to me like, it. it you're about to eat a sandwich. It's in, incorrect. It's stiff. It makes the audience worry about you. Or you get this, which is stress. But to be able to convey delicacy and, oh, this is so easy for me, um, that's, that's a skill. And it makes your audience feel relaxed when you watch that. So carriage of the arms in port de bras is something that Yuzudu is just he just absolutely excel, excels at. And I think it's something that comes naturally to him. I don't want to take away the fact that he properly works very hard at it. And I understand that he practices in front of the mirror a whole lot. Um, but the fact that he has it and he's not a, a professional ballet dancer is just amazing. Um, this is my, these are my dancers. And we are holding part of the ending pose to Haru Yokoi. These are my Haru Yokoi dancers. Um, here's examples of Yuzudu's absolutely stunning port de bras. Shoulders are down, sternum is lifted, and he's just holding his arms with grace and ease. He, uh, the hand. Whenever he wears a, a glove and it's contrasted against the white ice, it's just absolutely stunning. And that is a ballet hand right there. It's soft, it's delicate, and, it, and yet it still has strength. Oh, there's the port de bras right there too. I, the atonal port de bras is just, just gorgeous. I love the contrast of the hand against the ice. Arms in fifth ano. Fifth ano means the arms above the head, shoulders are down. That is a ballet position right there in the Tistolata. Um, we're going to take, a, we're going to watch a little video now. I won't speak over the video. Um, I may not play the entire video, but this is a beautiful video from Val of Yuzudu's warm up. Um, the warm up or cool down. I, I think it actually may be cool down. But whenever I see this cool down, I feel like I would pay money for just watching the cool down. And when I went to ACI and he started to cool down and I didn't care what music it was to, like I felt like I could breathe with him and it is connected. In ballet, we, we do an exercise called adagio. And adagio is both at the bar and it is center. And when we are doing an adagio, it is our it is our purpose to make everything look connected and to make everything look graceful and easy, even though we're just standing on one leg and it's very hard, but it is our job to make it look easy. That's the way I feel about Yuzudu's cool down. It's very difficult things that he's doing and yet it's just, it's just connected and it's smooth and it's graceful. So let's take a couple moments and we're gonna watch this gorgeous, gorgeous cool down. <laughs>
go ahead and pause there. Um, it, it's just it's just so exquisite the way that everything is connected, and and it actually it just looks like he's it's just like he's breathing through it, and that, and that is a gift, and that is a skill, and that is not something that that comes naturally to most dancers. Um, so to watch it live again when I saw him cool down, I thought, oh, what a privilege! I I'm, I'm I feel so honored to be able to watch him cool down. I, I would be okay if I never saw him perform. If I just saw him warm up and cool down, <laughs> that would be a gift for me. All right, going back, um, the, look, look, look at his hand in this, in this combre, in this Ina Bauer, uh, just exquisitely positioned hand and amazing flexibility. Um, these are my dancers. My noticed a lot of dancers in front of the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts, and we did a little, um, a little photo shoot. And this is our version of the Ina Bauer. It, again, in order to um, be able to do this, you have to have amazing back flexibility. They're in a rotated, turned out fourth position lunge, which just holding that lunge is really difficult. Um, and we're just showing off that black back flexibility, just like you do. That is a combre for us. Um, here we have, here we have the beautiful Combre. This is from our Hado Yukoi. And so now we're looking at Yuzudu and this is one of our um, dancers that is now becoming a professional ballerina and she is showing off her amazing, her amazing back flexibility right here. And if you notice, it is a very similar line to Yuzudu's back flexibility. So, um, it, it's just amazing how much flexibility he has, not just from the hips, not just from the hamstrings, but from the hamstrings, but also from the back flexibility, which is, is, is just a, a joy to see. Uh, and I couldn't get enough pictures of the Ina Bauer. So there we go, many, many pictures of the Ina Bauer. Um, now let's talk about arabesque. Um, generally in arabesques, so we have three arabesques. This is a first arabesque. When we, have the, when we do the arabesque, when we execute the arabesque, you wanna have the sternum lifted the shoulders down, the neck is long. Um, 90 degree arabesque, if you see here, uh, this is our dancer. Her leg is a little bit above 90 degrees. And so you wanna be able to lift up that leg higher and higher and higher. And it requires a lot of hip flexibility in addition to strength. We work a lot at the bar to get hip flexibility and strength, to get that leg up there, to be able to hold it up there. The supporting leg needs to be straight. So we want straight lines. Straight lines are aesthetically pleasing and turned out in the, in the supporting leg. This is first arabesque. Uh, arabesque. Um, this is our first arabesque in Notus Stellata. Notice our little poo down there. This is first arabesque in our Haru Yokoi. Now here's Yuzudus. And look at the leg is above 90 degrees. The sternum is lifted. And more than likely, he just came out of a triple axle when he did this. So, you know, he's making it, it all look very easy. But he, when he comes out of a jump, he makes it just look like easy, I'm just going on to the next step. There is no tension, there's no shoulders up there. It's not like he did anything really difficult. He's just transitioning to the next thing. And that's why I find his skating so aesthetically pleasing. I feel relaxed when I watch him. I don't, I don't really worry when I watch him. Um, look, there's another beautiful arabesque. The leg is lifted. The angle is from up top. Um, this is, I think, for a commercial. Look at how high his leg is back there. And he is on skates on the ground. And he's balanced, and that's amazing. And look at that core strength. I mean, wow, that's wow, that's just absolutely beautiful. Hip flexibility, strength, all of it. Um, another position that we have in ballet is called attitude. And so we have to have that flex hip flexibility, but we bend the knee behind us. And this is attitude derriere, which means attitude behind us. We also have attitude to the divan, which means attitude in front. Um, this is a, a, a slight, slight um, lesson in anatomy. In order to have flexibility, you have to have a group of muscles. Your iliopsoas have to be flexible. So we work really hard on gaining flexibility from the iliopsoas. Lots of stretching at the bar so that we can gain that iliopsoas um, mobility. There's another one of my dancers in attitude. There's Poo saying hi to us. This was our final performance of Notus Stellata. Now let's look at Yuzudu. This is my favorite picture of Yuzudu in Attitude Derriere. Um, he is doing a tonal. This is part of his atonal step sequence. And look at how high that leg is. Like, wow. And the supporting leg is straight. And he's in the air. Shoulders are down. I mean, it's amazing. And he's in the air. And he's wearing skates. Um, 
the amazing thing though is he does this he he does a double soda boskin i i believe that val's talked about this quite a bit we've we've talked about the similarities between ballet this particular step um val and i have about ballet and ice skating attitude to the derriere it is a double soda basque in attitude derriere but yuzuru does it from a hydro blade there is nothing equivalent to the hydro blade in, in classical ballet, I can at least say. Um, Yuzudu does it from the lowest point in his step sequence in a total to the highest point in a second. That is amazing. Now let's add to the fact that he is on the ice and let's add to the fact that his skates weigh something. When we do it in ballet, our, our, our men's ballet slippers weigh nothing. Yuzudu does it with weights on his feet and it is absolutely stunning. Now let's take a little look at the Soda Boskin attitude area. Double Soda Boskin attitude area. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't ca I didn't catch it from when he took it from the um, hydro blade, but yes, the lowest part to the highest part. Absolutely amazing. And when we saw it at AC ACI, it took my breath away. Like, how, how is that humanly possible? Um, another thing that we work on ballet. Is, is flexibility. So we spend a lot of time stretching at the bar. This is one of my beautiful dancers stretching at the bar. Um, extension all the second. Look at Yuzudu's. His supporting leg is straight. His extension goes straight up. It's basically a standing splits. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the posture is absolutely gorgeous and exactly like ballet. Flexibility, splits are very important to us. <laughs> I loved it when Yuzudu dropped down to the jazz splits. Uh, that was 4CC, what a wonderful memory. Um, side splits for us in ballet. Look at that. I mean, let's go crazy. Let's all go crazy over that. That's amazing. Uh, here we go back to the hip flexibility. This is attitude area again. And what we're trying to do in ballet is we are trying to get that leg all the way up and have it meet our head. This is part of our um, nutcracker. Here's one of my dancers demonstrating it again. Um, this dancer is extremely flexible. She was also is also a gymnast. Now here's Yuzudu. I believe that in, in figure skating, this is called the Beelman. But look at that. This is, um, this is I believe, just recently at, at Grand Prix Final. Um, still, the most amazing hip flexibility. And this is a spin. Wow, I just, uh, I, I'm so jealous of all of you who got to witness not just a lot of that last time. Absolutely stunning. Um, another thing that we do in ballet is a grand batma, big kick. So when we teach grand batma, the energy goes up, really powerful, and we control it on the way down. So it shouldn't go up and then flop back down. It goes up and control on the way down. Now, I mean, showing off that, that, hip, that hip flexibility again, the amazing hamstring flexibility. And of course, he does this out of a triple axle. I mean, wow, amazing. Um, I want to show that he uses the same energy in his batma that we do in ballet. So if you notice in that Bantma, it was energy up, control on the way down. It wasn't energy up and flop down. I mean, that's how ballet dancers execute a Grand Bantma. This is how he's doing it naturally. I mean, it's just, again, everything that he does speaks to me as a ballet dancer. Moving on, Grand Chate, big leap. We're trying to do splits in the air. I know that in figure skating, it's all about the jumps and the turns, um, but Yuzudu just happens to be an amazingly flexible person also that he's able to show these other things off, similar to Jason Brown. Um, so here we go, Grand Chate, big leap. This is our Grand Chate in Haru Yokoi. This is our Grand Chate in um, Nutcracker. And there is Yuzudu's in Crystal Memories. Oh, such a gorgeous costume, gorgeous sleep. And poor kid, he's just not very flexible, is he? That is just amazing. And, and again, he's doing it on the ice with weights on his feet. Wow. Um, so that concludes my short lecture on um, the similarities, just the foundations. I mean, ballet, we could talk about forever, of ballet and, and the similarities between ballet and Yuzudu's figure skating. Port de bras, turnout, flexibility, um, just carriage and posture. Posture, posture, posture. He has amazing balletic posture. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox with that. Um, Notice Stellata. So um, I was thinking about Notice Stellata this week, and at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and it, it hit me. And why? Why is it that, well, what sets Yuzuru's um, exhibition of Notice Stellata apart? 
Um, and I think back to the Dying Swan, Fokin's choreography of the Dying Swan. And as ballet dancers, specifically point dancers, we have many things at our disposal. We can do a variety of turns, we can leap, we can do a variety of jumps. There's so many things we can do. But what is Dying Swan? Dying Swan is simple beret on the toes, simple beret on the toes, and exquisite port de bras and raw emotion. And that is exactly what Yuzuru does in Notistolata. What is that one commentator who said right after Notistolata um, at, at the Olympics with a del single delayed, a, a, what is it, a delayed single axle, one triple axle? Yuzuru Hanyu just gave a master class in what figure skating should be. Yes, amen. I uh, agree with that. We don't need all the amazing jumps. We do. Don't get me wrong. We do. But we can take that all out and still be moved by the beauty of Yuzuru Hanyu skating. That's what I feel about Notistolata. Um, when I first saw Notistolata, I just, I was inspired and I thought, okay, I, I don't want to do Dying Swan. I want to do a, I want to choreograph a tribute to Yuzuru's Notistolata. So I would play the music in class and we would just have an exercise of just bourree at some point. And I just started to pull choreography, port de bras, that I remembered from Yuzuru Skate. And our Notistolata started out as an exercise for berets. So I just started to improv. I don't know I'm really choreographed that way, um, but I just started to improv. So I'm gonna show you a little rehearsal of our Notistolata and how it started for us and how I pulled from different pieces of Yuzuru Skate, not necessarily just Notistolata, but different pieces of Yuzuru Skate. So here are my dancers Notistolata rehearsing Notistolata, just the beginning. Five, six, seven, eight. started to do is we just started to pull different port de bras. So this is the opening of a tonal. And this is that moment in Haru Yokoi. And then we went in and we started to pull from Notis, from Notis Delata. And as we started to practice that um, in the studio, I'm like, I think I like this. I think this is going to be the beginning of the dance. And so I just started to work through improvisation. And I started to watch his Notis Delata over and over and over again. Um, and I started to pull from his musicality. I haven't even began to speak about Yuzuru's amazing ear and musicality. And I feel like I also have a really strong sense of musicality. So his phrasing and the way he skates is amazing. And it really resonates with me because of his strong sense of musicality. So what I wanted to do in our notes to Lada is when he turned, I wanted us to turn. Or when he did a big leap, I wanted us to do a big leap. So maybe we weren't doing the exact same thing, but we were pulling a bit of the essence of his musicality out. Um, so uh, exquisite port de bras, raw, vulnerable. You you just feel with him as he is skating. And and, and what a brave person, what a brave artist to, to be able to show us that. It's it's not just jazz hands, it's, it's raw and beautiful. Um, so we started pulling port de bras. Here's our, as we go through our port de bras our port de bras. Um, arms in fifth position on O. Arms in fifth position on O. We put this at a different part. This is our ending. Um, he did his gorgeous Ina Bauer. We put in the Ina Bauer at the exact same time that he did. That was very important to me. Um, of course, this is a nod to the dying swan, yes? And, and look at the hands perfectly placed. We did our nod to both dying swan and to use use no testolata. Um, I just threw this in here as a, as a little extra. Um, 
my notistolata is not an is not a tribute to dying swan my notistolata is a tribute to yuzuru hanyu so i didn't want to put my dancers in a pancake tutu and mimic dying swan um so i chose a a more streamlined costume and then but i did want to do a nod <laughs> excuse me to um the feathers so i started creating headpieces i made all the headpieces myself and um, what my dancers yet laughed at me, but what I did is I took all my jewelry, my costume jewelry, and I started cutting them up because that's a lot of crystals. So some of those you, know, you can see down there are my beta tests for the head pieces. I decided not to use the blue. I took the blue out because it didn't, it didn't carry on, on the stage, but I just chopped up all my jewelry. And as I added more dancers, I thought, oh no, I'm gonna have to chop up more jewelry. Um, well, I did, I chopped up more jewelry and then we added a little piece that had Schwabsky crystal and it had some feathers. So it was our little nod. It, it, for me, it was my nod to Yuzu's gorgeous costume. Um, so again, trying to pull from the essence of what was presented and not directly copy. Um, so here's a little history. Uh, I was a big fan of Yuzu Duhuanyu in the year 2018. I choreographed this note to lot of ballet. I did not choreograph it with any intention of anyone see it besides my crescendo families when I presented it at recital. Um, we had our lighting designer come to the studio for what we call light night to watch our choreography and build the light for our recital. That night, everyone was in costume and I took a picture of my dancer's point shoes. And I tweeted this picture out to my 30 Twitter followers. Nicole Karina happened to follow me and she retweeted it and that's kind of where it came from and people started asking for the choreography and i thought oh no that was not my intention i got very worried because i am very protective of my dancers and i didn't want anyone to say anything unkind um we had such an amazing response that after fourteen thousand views on youtube i took the comments i, I allowed comments to be um left because I thought it seems like people kind of like our dance and dancers, you deserve to hear what they're saying. I don't want, I don't want me to just hear it. My dancers deserve to hear what they were saying. And for the most part, 99% of the comments were extremely kind. We started receiving gifts from all over the world. We still are receiving gifts from all over the world. I just got something yesterday. Um, I cannot say enough positive things about Yuzidu's fans. You are amazing people. You are so generous. And it has been a great um, enhancement in my life to get to know you. So I think that people were kind to us because they loved Yuzuru. And because they loved Yuzuru, they liked our dance. And I thank you for that. So anyways, we put it on YouTube. And um, there, was a, there was a fan that's called Team Morser and they superimposed Yuzuru skating with our notice to Lada. I'm gonna show it to you now. Hopefully no one's offended by it. I in no way want to, to allude to the fact that our notice to Lada is anywhere close to Yuzuru's. I'm merely doing this to show the similarities between the choreography. Hopefully no one's offended. Here is our notice to Lada with Yuzuru. <laughs>
that was okay for everybody. Um, sorry, I get a little choked up. I miss my dancers. So if any of my dancers are out there watching, I miss you guys. You did such a great job. So proud of you. Getting to the coffin was a journey. Um, lots of rehearsals, lots of bloody feet and point shoes, um, a little bit of stress. Um, but they did such a perfect job and I'm so proud of them. And Yuzuda's Notis Stilata was such an amazing inspiration for all of us and we're so grateful that he inspired us for that performance. Um, one of my favorite parts of Nota Salata, I remember choreographing it thinking, okay, number one, no one's gonna get this dance. This is a dance that I choreographed as a conversation to myself about how much I like to use it skating. So I thought number one, no one's gonna see it. And number two, no one's gonna get it. No one's gonna understand it. And I really think that for me, my dance, my dances are more contemporary ballet, where however you interpret it, it what you take away from it, from your personal experiences, is, is what it's meant to be. I, I will just tell you what it means to me and what my intentions were. And if that's not what you got from it, that's absolutely okay. But the end of Notice a lot of where in, a, in, a, in an X with a central figure, and probably couldn't tell, but everything that she did was exactly what Yuzuru did, the central figure. So she's the, our Yuzuru person. Um, and uh, at the end, everybody comes over with a hover, yes? And so to me, that was my, my feeling of, uh, you know, how the fans all come together and, and protect him somehow. You know, we, we support him, we protect him. You're amazing and you travel the world and you follow him and wow, that's, and of, of course, rightly so, he's an amazing human being. And so that was, that the, the hover and the X is, is the protection. But in the end, we all leave we all leave and in the end as that last dancer leaves it is it is our way of saying you know we support you but we understand that this is your journey alone and it is up to you to continue on and to continue to inspire us so that's the ending pose and and they're they're back to the atonal pose and she turns her head exactly how he did in in atonal from the end of the journey to the beginning of a new journey um and of course we had our 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 support poo in the background and um who means or means a lot to us that's poo right back there same poo that we had for both shows so that's our notice to lotta um notice to lotta we quite we actually had the privilege of performing quite a few times throughout last spring of 2019. Um, we performed it for the last time in september um of 2019 which ironically was a stage that was built over an ice rink 
And as soon as we performed it for the last time, I, with the help of Nicole, got tickets to ACI. And my family and I got on a plane and we saw the exquisite Yuzuru Hanyu skate at ACI. Um, it, was, it, was, it was so amazing and I got to meet so many fans and people were so generous and loving and, and supportive. And, and it was just, it was, it was an amazing experience. It, for me, it was not just meeting, not, I didn't get to meet Yuzuru, but, um, not just seeing Yuzuru skate, but meeting the fans too and this whole amazing YuzuCon where people exchange gifts and yeah, we love him and we support each other and, and not just supportive of Yuzu. Everyone was there clapping for all of the skaters out there. Just good people, just good people. So we got to see Atono and we got to see Origin. And when Origin was done, my husband and I were standing in the back and I just turned to him and it like took my breath away and I just hugged him. I'm like, thank you. Thank you that we came and we got to witness this. And I feel like my life is enriched for being here and witnessing this beautiful artist on the ice. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to um, watch him say it again. We had tickets to Worlds. Um, but I feel grateful that I have at least had the privilege of seeing him skate once. And, and my life is enriched because of it. And because I met these amazing people. So I came home with all those feelings and uh, I immediately started to reach out to one specific friend. Oh, let me talk. Nutta Stilata was formed, performed at the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts, the um, uh, uh, Future Stages Festival. This is a beautiful performing arts center. It is a per premier performing arts center in the Midwest of the United States. And for us to be selected was a great pr privilege. It is a beautiful, beautiful professional stage, brand new. Um, so we felt very honored that we were able to present this tribute to Yuzuru Hanyu on that stage. Um, okay, now I'll talk about Haru Yokoi. Um, I came back energized, wanting to choreograph a second piece. Um, and I, I, I really felt like I wanted to choreograph a, another tribute. I wanted to do Haru Yokoi. Um, but I felt a little nervous about it. I didn't know. I know that this Haru Yokoi meant a lot to Yuzuru and his tribute to the victims of the great earthquake. And I wanted to honor that also. I didn't want to mimic what he did in Haru Yokoi, um, but maybe again, pull the essence of what he did and, and pay homage to that also. So I started talking to my sweet friend in Japan and with, with her encouragement, um, she continued to give me feedback and I'm like, okay, well, I'll give it a try and let's see what happens. Um, when I choreographed Haru Yokoi, my dancers were in rehearsal for Nutcracker. So I was unable to try out choreography on them and see what worked and what didn't work, which is usually my process. I had to choreograph everything on paper. So I watched Haru Yokoi 500, 1,000 times, and I found Yuzu, Yuzuru's musicality. Haru Yokoi as a piece of music um, is basically five phrases. There's a middle bridge phrase there. Um, so I, I found the rise and the fall of his phrasing. I found his musicality because I really studied what he did with Haru Yokoi and the raw emotion and the beauty of Haru Yokoi. And then I started to have, okay, images that I saw in my head. Um, Haru Yokoi for me is both a tribute to Yuzuru skating, to Yuzuru's Haru Yokoi, and also a, a tribute to Yuzuru's fans. So I'm going to point out those things coming up. Um, I started to build the costumes so I would I, I would watch um, Skate Canada and put Swarovski crystals on the little embellishments and so it was quite the journey for me. Uh, it's a, it was an obsession and it was an obsession that kept my head in a good positive space so so be it. Um, the costume was very important to me and I chose this costume because the skirt was very heavy and once we received the costume I realized that once the dancers started to turn they looked like cherry blossoms so I changed my choreography and I choreographed to the skirt so there's many moments where we dance with the skirt we play with the skirt and I wanted to give that image of spring and rebirth and the beautiful Japanese cherry blossoms I did not want to have a sleeve because uh, Yuzuru has a gorgeous costume with that gorgeous sleeve. And I didn't want to copy. Again, how can I pull in the S's and still give, give tribute to what he has done without copying? I tried to the best of my ability. So my dancers performed um, Nutcracker the very first of November, toward the beginning of November. And as soon as they were done, my poor dancers, um, 
they were supposed to have a nutcracker party and I wouldn't let them, I made them put on their point shoes and we started learning how to yokoi. They learned how to yokoi through an ice storm. They learned how to yokoi over their winter break because I knew that we had been invited to the Chinese New Year Festival here in Kansas City and I wanted to be able to perform that in January. So we had very small time to learn it, perfect it and get it ready. Um, this is our, again, I hopefully no one's offended. I, I want to see it show the similarities between our Haru Yokoi and Yuzuru's Haru Yokoi. If you look closely, I followed the phrasing a lot closer when I choreographed this time because I had more time to look at it. The opening circle um, for me is a tribute to the fans. So when I, I, I have now seen him skate live, which I didn't when I choreographed Nota Stellata. So that opening circle represents the ice rink and this, the people watching him represents the fans. And so all the fans coming together watching him. As you see the opening, we have a, the dancers do this gesture where it's a rainbow. As, as the center figure does the exact port de bras of Yuzuru's Haru Yokoi. And this gesture right here is pantomime in ballet for the passage of time. So for me, that means that it is all the fans coming together around in the ice rink and watching him grow up and watching him skate and develop as this, an amazing artist over time. So it's my way to speak not only to pay tribute to Yuzuru's Haru Yokoi, but also to, to pay tribute to the fans and how amazingly gracious and wonderful people they are. So here is our Haru Yokoi performed at the Yardley Hall in Kansas City um, at the Chinese New Year Festival.
So that's our how do you coy. Um, I had every intention for us to perform this at Chinese New Year Festival and for it to be the beginning of us performing at throughout the spring. Um, the, there's many festivals here in Kansas City and, and uh, Chinese New Year's Festival was supposed to be our springboard to perform it quite a bit throughout the spring. Um, and then the virus hit. And so we have only had the opportunity to perform it once. Um, I miss my kids a lot. I think they did a great job. And I feel fortunate that we had the opportunity to perform it once. And I feel confident if any of my kids are watching that we will have the opportunity to perform it again. Um, I, we are, have been selected for the Future Stages virtual festival by the Coffin for the, Percent, the Center of Performing Arts. And I'll give you more information about that at the end. Um, back to choreography. Uh, so we're in the circle. And what I try to do is follow um, what Yuzuru's phrasing was. And so his musicality. So the look, he opens up on the four and. And so that's what we did here. There's that opening. That's what my dancer did with everyone surrounding him. Again, it's the ice rink. Um, I just have to say thank you to the Kansas, um, the Chinese festival, uh, they gave us the most beautiful, the most beautiful lighting. And I so appreciate that. Um, so there's many parts of, of Haru Yokoi that, that um, we're supposed to be like supportive, like the fans taking care, nurturing. Um, and so if you see that there's two concentric circles and the center figure is in the middle, then everyone is supporting and, and protecting around that central figure. Also, it, it, it is an image of a cherry blossom. That happens a lot throughout Haru Yokoi. Um, here are our Shanae turns that as they turn, I, I just absolutely love these costumes so much. They're sitting in my closet downstairs. Um, they're clean and ready for the next performance. This is my favorite part of, of Yuzuru's Haru Yokoi, uh, aside from the hydro blade and the throwing up of the ice, um, where he turns around and he just has a moment of stillness. And I feel like stillness is so underrated and it's raw and it's emotional and all of us stop breathing when he does it. And then he moves on and, and it's absolutely stunning. And, and I wanted to add that to our Haru Yokoi. I feel like stillness is so underrated and, and how many figure skaters, how many dancers can hold the audience in the palm of their hand for a moment. And he does and he does it exquisitely. So we added that to our, this is in rehearsal, <laughs> excuse me. This is our Haru Yokoi. Um, and so we added this moment. This, this is what I call the box formation. And it is my favorite part of our Haru Yokoi. I tried to copy, not copy, I tried to take the essence of what he's doing in terms of phrasing. So we dance in this part a lot with our skirts. Here's, we're back on stage here. We're dancing with our skirts. And that moment when he opens his arms up when he's doing the spin, on right right at this moment right after here um i wanted to honor that so that's when we opened up our skirts so again we don't have sleeves but we have skirts so we try to follow the phrasing this is a part um yuzuru's musicality for haru yokoi goes to different places that i would normal not normally do as a choreographer so he's turning he's he finishes his turn dramatically over the middle of a phrase which is not a place that I would normally do. So I had to listen to it while driving like many times to be able to understand where he executed that turn. So it seems very simple, but for us to, to get this turn down at the right place when he did it, um, took us a lot of practice. But once I, we got it, and once I understood the way he did it, it was better. So his, his natural innate sense of musicality is just amazing and really comes across in Haru Yokoi. This is our Grand Allegro, our big jumping series. At the end of Haru Yokoi, just a little shout out that we had three papillons. Papillon is step of the butterfly in this um, in this Grand Allegro across the floor. Um, so we were kind of another nod to spring. We tried to do the Chasse Soda Basque and Attitude Derriere. It is too difficult of a step. So we actually put it on hold and thought, well, the next time we perform it, we could try to do it. And so far, there hasn't been a next time, but there will be. Um, just a little, little poo in the background. We still had poo on the stage with us. Um, his beautiful Ina Bauer. Look at that flexibility and that costume. Absolutely stunning. Um, we added our Ina Bauer at the same time that his, he did his Ina Bauer. We didn't have sleeves. So at the very end, we added a scarf to enhance the Ina Bauer just a little bit more. 
And our dancers slid back into that circle at the very end. Now, if you notice, this circle is slightly different from the opening circle in that the, the dancers are holding each other up. They're holding hands. Yeah, we're connected. And for me, this is way, a, a way of saying over time, the fans become connected. So thank you, friends out there. I feel connected to you. And maybe I live in the United States and maybe you live in Japan or maybe you live in Brazil or maybe you live in Seoul, Korea, but I feel connected to you. And I appreciate that friendship. So that's what this says at the very end. I also feel like how do your court has a little bit more meaning in light of the virus. Um, you know, spring will come again. Spring will come and there's hope. And one day I'm going to get my dancers out and we're going to perform this am amongst the cherry blossoms. That is my goal. So that is how do you Uh This is the ending. At the very ending, Yuzuru does a beautiful port de bras and then he does a hug and then he looks up like to the future right? Supporting the people who've been through the earthquake. And this is our dancer who did the same thing. Again, we're holding each other up. My dancers were literally holding each other up. They went from in the air to the floor into a circle. They did so great in that performance. I'm so proud of them. Um, so future, future, future stages, uh, virtual festival. It will be done online this year because of the virus. And so we have once again, once again been selected and we feel so honored and privileged to be selected. Um, I will post it on my CV Dance Twitter account. Um, it's going to be happening between 1 and 4 on June the 14th. Um, had there been no virus, we would be on the stage again. Um, if you would like to see Haru Yokoi or Notice Stellata, um, it can be found on the Crescendo Conservatory YouTube page. Um, it is Haru Yokoi and Notice Stellata with just Crescendo only, not with Yuzuru. So that I do not have on our, our YouTube. I, that would be a copyright infringement. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, hopefully, maybe it made you feel good. I know for me, I, whenever I read somebody um, saying something nice about Yuzuru, I, I just say yes, and that makes me feel good. I agree with you. He's amazing. Um, and he's amazing, not just as a figure skater. That is That goes without saying. But he seems like a lovely young man. And as a parent, I, I really appreciate his tenacity, his strength. Um, to be able to go to the Olympics and, and get that second gold medal and to do it with grace and dignity. Um, he is a role model on many levels for so many people. And I think that he is a gift. And aren't we, aren't we so privileged to be able to witness his skating still? And aren't we so very lucky that he hasn't retired yet? <laughs>